So let's examine a quick application of the second law of motion. So let's suppose a car with a mass of 2,000 kilograms is traveling at a speed of 120 kilometers per hour along the x-axis in the positive direction. We want to find the average net force required to stop this car over a distance of 50 meters. So recall that our second or our first law of motion states that our car will continue to move as long as there's no net force acting on the object. But according to our second law of motion, if a net force does in fact act on our object, that object will begin to experience acceleration. And in this case, our acceleration will be in the negative direction. So that means our car is actually decelerating. Its velocity will decrease. So we want to find what our net force should be to stop this car over a distance of 50 meters from an initial velocity of 120 kilometers per hour to a final velocity of zero kilometers per hour. Now, in our first step, we want to convert the 120 kilometers per hour into meters per second because our distance is given in meters. So in order to convert our 120 kilometers per hour, we want the top to become meters and the bottom to become seconds. So we have a thousand meters per kilometer, so our kilometers will cancel. And we have 3,600 seconds per hour. So our hours will cancel and we're left with meters per second and the value is 33.3 meters per second. Now, in our second step, we want to find what our deceleration is. In other words, in order to find the force, we must know the mass and our acceleration. That's the second law of motion. So before we find net force or the average net force, we have to use one of the kinematics equations to find our acceleration. Now, in order to use these equations, of course, we have to make the assumption that our car is decelerating at a constant rate. So let's make that assumption and let's use the following equation. So we're using our x components of velocity because our car is moving along the x-axis. So our final speed squared equals our initial speed squared plus two times our acceleration or in this case the deceleration multiplied by our displacement or change in position. So change in position is 50 meters. Our acceleration is what we want to find so we solve for a now our initial velocity is given our final velocity is zero we want our car to come to a complete stop so we rearrange and we bring a to one side and we see that our a is in fact negative because when we bring this over it becomes negative so we see that our acceleration is actually the deceleration it's acceleration in the opposite direction of motion and that makes sense because we want our car to stop we want the velocity to decrease to zero meters per second so we plug in our values and we get negative 33.3 squared divided by 100 so 2 times 50 equals negative 11.1 meters per second squared so this is our deceleration which is assumed to be constant now if this is not constant then that's exactly why we're finding the average net force. So now let's find our net force. So we use our second law of motion. So we have the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. So we know our mass that's given in kilograms and we found our uh, acceleration or deceleration to be 11.1 .1 meters per second squared. So we multiply the two numbers out and we get approximately 22,222 newtons in the negative direction. Remember, our net force is a vector, so we have magnitude as well as direction. The negative simply means it's pointing in the opposite direction of motion. So our car is actually decelerating. It's coming to a stop.